we're going to talk about balancing reactions now. So here I have a propane reacting with O2 to form CO2 and H2O. This is a combustion reaction. And the rules for balancing reactions is we want to start with the compound with the most deviation and we want to end with the one that's all alone when possible. What I mean by that is looking at this we have O2. This is alone. I'll make it alone. So this is alone and this is we're going to balance last. Then we can look at everything else and look for deviation. So here we have three carbons on this side and one carbon on that. Eight hydrogens on that side and two on that. It really doesn't matter. They both have points of deviation. We don't we have to change both the carbon and the hydrogen. So specifically for these types of combustion reactions, hydrocarbon combustion reactions, I like to write CHO. Just because it's fun to say CHO. All right, so on the left-hand side here, we have three carbons. And on the right-hand side, we only have one. Now remember, when we're balancing reactions, we can only change the coefficient in front of each compound or molecule, whatever the situation is. We can only change the coefficient. We can't change anything else. So if we have three carbons on the left and one carbon on the right, how I do it is I say three divided by one is three and I put that number there. So I took the big number, divided by the smallest number, and put the answer there. Now let's move on to hydrogen. On my left we have eight. On the right we have two. Eight divided by two is four. So we put a four here, and now we now have eight hydrogens. Let's move on to oxygen. On our left hand side we have two. On our right hand side we have 3 times O2, in other words 6 from this one, and 4 from this one for a total of 10 oxygens. And it doesn't change, 10 divided by 2 is 5, and that's why I put a 5 there. And now this reaction is balanced. So C3H8 plus 5O2 yielding 3CO2, <coughs> excuse me, and 4H2O. Let's do another problem up the difficulty a little bit. Here we've got some butane. Still a combustion reaction. Oxygen we want to make sure we balance last. Hydrogen and carbon are technically interchangeable because both of them are different on each side. But Cho is more fun to say. On the left hand side for carbon we have four carbons. On the right hand side we only have one. 4 divided by 1 is 4. Move on to hydrogen. On the left we have 10. <clears throat> on the right hand side we have 2. 10 divided by 2 is 5. So we'll put a 5 there. And then we'll move on to oxygen. On our left hand side we have 2. On our right hand side we have 4 times 2 or 8 from this one. And 5 from the five waters for a total of 13. <clears throat> now this doesn't change anything. Our rules still stay the same. 13 divided by 2, I think most people would say, is 6.5 or 13 halves. But when you do this, now you have a balanced reaction, but you should notice that 0.5 is kind of funky. And generally we're looking for whole numbers. So you multiply any number that's 0.5, you multiply it by 2, in order to get a whole number. But you can't just do it to this because that would alter the amount of everything. So what we do to one thing, we have to do to the other. So we're going to take this whole reaction and multiply it all times 2. So our final will be 2C4H10 plus 13O2 yielding 8CO2 and 10 waters. And now we have whole numbers, everything's balanced. If you were to go through and look at this, we'd have the appropriate number of everything. Let's move on to something that's not. Um, a reaction like we were just talking about, that's not a combustion reaction of, of hydrocarbons. So here we have aluminum 
plus O2, yielding this aluminum oxide. You want to balance the thing that's alone last. And when you look at them, aluminum's alone and O2's alone. So next question should be, which one's the more difficult point of difference? Well, aluminum, I have one here and two there. So it'd be really easy if I just put a two here. But O2, we have two here and three there. You should recognize that that's slightly more difficult. And that's why we want to start with the oxygen. Start with the most difficult thing and get it out of the way. On our left hand side, we have two. On our right hand side, we have three. There are two ways we can go about it. We can say three divided by two would give us 1.5 and then balance the aluminum. We'll have to multiply everything by two. Totally doable and we could do that. But I think what comes more intuitively to everyone is that you're gonna multiply this one by three in order to get six and you multiply this one by two in order to get six as well. And now we have six and six on each side. Now we can move on to the aluminum. Now on my left hand side I have one, on my right hand side I have two Al2s, in other words four, and four divided by one is four. And this would be our final balance reaction. I have one more example with polyatomic ions. I think it's pretty fun. We have magnesium chloride reacting with sodium phosphate to form magnesium phosphate and sodium chloride. Now we have to figure out the point of difference, etc. But one of the things that we should pay attention to is the fact that we have a polyatomic ion here and here, phosphate and phosphate. If it did not change, if it did not, if it remained phosphate on both sides of the reaction, we're going to keep it as one whole thing. So we're going to keep it as one entire phosphate, and just like we balanced um, oxygen or aluminum, we'll do the same with phosphate. All right, now we need to look for the thing that's alone. I see nothing that's alone. So your question is, okay, magnesium, we got one here and three there. That's not too bad. We could change that pretty quickly. Chlorine, chlorine, one, two and one, not too bad. Sodium three and one, phosphate one and two. Everything looks pretty straightforward. I like to get the polyatomic ions out of the way because they tend to be the scarier thing for most students. Okay, on my left hand side I have one. On my right hand side I have two. Two divided by one is two. And now we have two phosphates on each side. After that, it really doesn't matter. Um, maybe you notice that now you change the number of sodiums. So this is a bigger point of difference. <clears throat> so let's go ahead and change that. On my left hand side, I have six. On my right hand side, I have one. Six divided by one is six. So I put a six in front of the sodium chloride. Now we can either move on to chlorine or magnesium, doesn't matter. Chlorine looks more difficult to me. Magnesium looks pretty straightforward. You got three, you just need to put a three there. So for chlorine on my left hand side, I have two. On my right hand side, I have six. Six divided by two is three. And that's why I put a three there. And that actually worked really well because we knew that we had to put a three there for magnesium. We move on to magnesium. We have three and three and our reaction is balanced. So we balanced combustion reactions, slightly more difficult combustion reactions. We um, looked at pretty straightforward reactions and reactions with polyatomic ions. All right, have a good one.